understanding the principles of effective communication. There's the principles. The two basic types of communication, interpersonal communication and written communication. General communicating skills apply regardless of the form of communication. Interpersonal communication skills come into play when you are talking to someone face to face or when your message is being communicated so that the audience can see and or hear you, even if you cannot see them. Written communication skills apply only when you commit a communication to paper, for example in a letter, email or press release, to a slide in a presentation or to a web page. The following section will look at general communication skills, interpersonal skills and how best to communicate in writing. For communication to take place, there must be an audience for your message to be communicated to. Who that audience is will determine the type of language you will use, the way you put your words together and how you deliver your message. Culture differences. Any culture differences between you and your audience or within your audience will need to be addressed. Some words or signs that are acceptable in one language or culture may be misunderstood or considered offensive in another, so you might choose to use different words or gestures from the ones you would normally use. Next, adapting to suit an audience. The age and composition of your audience can impact on the way you communicate with them. You might raise your voice or use a microphone to be heard or vary the tone of your voice to modulate it to maintain the interest of your audience. You might be selective in your choice of terminology to make sure that everyone in your audience understands your message. You might present your message in a particular format, for example using rhyme or music or delivered it electronically. Next, accuracy. Having adapted the content and style of your communication to meet the expectations or the need of your audience, you should next focus on the message that you are trying to convey. To win the hearts and minds of your audience, you may be tempted to stretch the truth or to make emotive statements to whip up feelings for again some political or social issue. For some audiences, these tactics may work. However, it is usually best to stick to the truth and to include only facts in your message. Otherwise you may run the risk of being shown to be a liar. If this happens, you will lose credibility and no one will listen to you, no matter how conscientious you claim to be. When aiming to provide accurate information, you must differentiate between facts and opinions. Day-to-day decision-making is often based on opinions, so you must make sure that you are fully informed before making any decision especially on that may affect other people as well as yourself. Some key terms. With facts, these can be proved. They are either true or false. Data can be collected and hypothesized tested. With opinions, these are more complex. They vary from one person to the next and can change with the same person from one day to the next. Opinions can be strong or weak and may be influenced by knowledge or the lack of it of the relevant facts. Next, engage in the audience. To maintain the interest levels of your audience, whether they are reading a report you've written or listening to a presentation, you need to apply various techniques. Imagine blah, listening blah, to a speaker blah, blah, blah. whose voice never varied blah, blah, in tone. Blah, blah, blah. It would soon put you to sleep when delivering your message, written or oral, or your tone. In an oral presentation, you can create interest by pausing from time to time, long enough to let the audience take in what you have said, but not too long so that they think you have forgotten what you are going to say next. You can create a similar effect in writing communication if you vary the sentence length, using longer sentences to carry a train of thought and short, punchy sentences to make a point. Use headings or bullet lists to section off or break up the message into manageable chunks. In a face-to-face -face situation, you might use multimedia to hold the interest of your audience and keep their eyes from wandering to their surroundings. For example, you could show presentation slides, play music or hold up an object to illustrate a point. You 
could also say that there will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of your talk, as this will encourage your audience to pay attention, thinking what they might want to ask. In written communications, diagrams and pictures can be used to enliven a slideshow. However, you need to apply caution, since too much activity can disrupt the message. Similarly, staying completely still while delivering your message may unsettle an audience, but continually pacing up and down can also be distracting. A balance is needed. Next, questions and answers sessions. Questions and answers or Q&A sessions can be particularly useful for clarifying points that you might have skimmed over in your presentation. You can't be sure on how much your audience has understood until you hear their questions. Apart from satisfying their curiosity, you can use the feedback to improve your presentation for the next time around. A question and answer session can also give the impression that the audience can throw any questions to the speaker and the speaker will have to answer it. This is not always the case. In broadcast Q&A sessions, the questionnaires often have to submit their questions beforehand so that these can be vetted and the speaker may be told of the questions that will be asked so they have time to prepare an answer. In face-to-face -face Q&A sessions, this level of control cannot be managed. However, the speaker may resort to saying what he she wants to say, showing the party line to those to speak rather than actually answering the question.